Hi, my name is Matt O'Neill. I'm one of the co-founders and managing partner at PrepMD, located in Braintree, Mass. And I want to take a couple of minutes and just share some thoughts on interviewing and interview technique. Um, a lot of people aren't aware, but there's basically five phases to an interview. And I wanted to review some of those, but the most important thing to understand before an interview is that you actually can prepare for an interview. Um, and also at the end of the interview, it's important to understand that it's important to close the person that you're speaking with about the interview, almost like closing a sale. So I just want to go through briefly each step and give you some tips about how to conduct yourself in each category. So first off, like anything, is an introduction and a connection. That's the first phase of the interview. And what's critical about that is that you want to make a connection with the person that you're actually interviewing with. Um, there's a lot of resources through social media and other, other means where you can actually learn a lot about the person that's interviewing you. So the expectation for you is to find a way to have a common ground or connection with that individual. It's been shown that the longer the connection phase of the interview goes, the better the outcome of the interview is. And the reason for that is that, like most of us, if we have uh, some connection with a person or if we have you know, some type of engagement with them that connects them to us, then we feel a little bit more obligated to sort of uh, give them the best opportunity. So in the connection introduction phase, you're gonna introduce yourself and then try to establish um, through small talk or just general discussion a, a common ground with the person. You'll realize that that phase is over when the candidate, or I'm sorry, when the interview person says to the candidate, which would be you, uh, why don't you tell me about yourself? And that would be the second phase of the interview, which is referred to as the review phase. Now, a lot of people have done this over the years in chronological order. In other words, they may start by saying what high school they went to, then what college, then what was their first job, and so on. And not that that is incorrect. It just maybe takes you a little bit too long to get to really the, the key assets that you have to offer the company. So what I would recommend is you think about identifying maybe three things that they should know about you. One might be that if you're going for a sales job that you have sales experience. Another might be if you have uh, going for a position that requires some type of technical background that you may have an engineering degree or something like that. So you might want to say something like, you know, before I go into the detail of my background, I'd like to give you three key points about myself that I think are critical to the position that you're hiring for. So right away that sets the person up to understand they're going to give me some bullet points here that I, I need to sit up and listen to. Um, another way to go about it is through a thematic way where you would actually create a theme of you know, a sales background or maybe a theme of where you have taken care of patients in the past and therefore they can relate to that and understand that it's a, a relatable experience that makes sense. So in the review phase you have to understand they do have your resume, so you don't need to go through the detail. What you want to do is sort of highlight or punch up your resume with specific points that you want to get across. So now as you get through the review phase, at the end of that, you're going to enter what's called the assessment phase. And you'll know you're there, you know, you'll know you're getting to that phase because the interview is going to be asking you more questions. So they will be speaking more than you. Up to this point, you'll be doing most of the talking. So once you enter the assessment phase, there are things that they're going to ask you like, you know, what is your, you know, what was your best job? What, what's your greatest strength? What is your weakness? And so on. You need to be prepared before the interview to understand those common type questions and be able to handle those questions that you might get during the interview. They may also start asking you about specific things about types of places you'd like to live. Would you like to be in an urban setting? Do you find yourself to be more rural? Do you want to be on an east coast, west coast? They're, what they're trying to do is learn more about you know, who you are as a person and then what are your strengths and what may be potentially your weaknesses. One of the things that you want to do in the assessment phase is you want to take a good inventory of your objective and relevant experiences. So one of the things that will, uh, if you're not clear about it, one of the things that they're going to want to be talking about is what is it that you objectively bring to the job? So for example, if you have an engineering degree and you have a 3.6 GPA, that's an objective asset that you have that you want to make sure during the assessment phase as they're assessing your skill set that you make that point and deliver that message. 
Also, if they're looking for people that are gonna work in a hospital and you've worked in a hospital before, you would want the opportunity to make sure you express the job you had while working in the environment that they're hiring for. So as they're assessing you, uh, these are the types of things you wanna keep in mind, your objective and relevant assets that you might have. As you work through that phase, they'll even talk further about the particular job and in particular the job fit. And when we think about job fit, that's the fourth phase or fourth segment of the interview process. And the job fit really is about, okay, let me tell you about the job description, what the job requires, and they're gonna build off of your background, your objective uh, assets that you've delivered, and the ability for you to see if you're a good fit. And so they're gonna talk in particular about what that job is. Is it a sales job? Is it a clinical job? What would you do on a day-to-day -day basis? This is where you need to be actively listening, where they would be describing the job, and you would have the opportunity to maybe ask reflective questions. And so what's a reflective question? It would be if they describe that you're gonna be working in medical device clinics, then you might wanna confirm, would that be in a hospital setting or would that be in a private practice setting? And things that shows that you're actively listening to what they're describing and that you're finding a way to fit yourself with your assets that you have into that job. And so job fit is really the uh, recruiter that's interviewing you, speaking more about the job itself and what they're looking for. Um, and then the final phase after that is the close, which is really another telltale sign that you're at the end of the interview or the close phase, is that they're gonna ask you, do you have any questions for me? So that's kind of a typical you know, uh, close for an interview. You know, thank you for your time. Do you have any questions for me? At this point, you should have questions lined up in several categories. And preparing those questions is important so that you can actually anticipate the answer and do a summation close, which I'll talk about in a minute. But some of the questions you want to ask would be about people. So a good question might be, you know, so Mr. Interviewer, if you had to pick three words that describe the people on your team, what would they be? And so they're going to give you that feedback. They might say well-educated. They might say hardworking. They'll give you different you know, answers to that. What you want to do as you ask these questions is you want to keep in mind how they're answering and how you uh, can support what you do in that role. So for example, if they say we're looking for, you know, my team is a, is a bunch of hard workers, you and your summation clothes would want to incorporate your uh, track record of working hard and how you did it in an objective way where you could describe you know, the actual work that you did. So you want to ask questions about the team and maybe one would be what, you know, what are three words that would describe your current team. A similar question would be could you give me three words that would describe the ideal person that you're looking to hire. And so the same rules would apply as you're actively listening to their response, you're going to use that in your summation close. Uh, so one is really about people. Another category is about products. So you may want to have enough information to ask about the products that they're currently marketing or maybe they're looking to market and maybe ask products about or ask questions about their products. That will indicate to them that you understand a little bit about you know, what you'd be doing and about the company. Third category is about the company. Maybe some general questions about questions about the company. Uh, and they need to be relevant to how it would relate to your particular job. So for example, you may have a large company with multiple divisions. You may be working in the you know, uh, interventional cardiology division of that company, but you may ask questions that are broader about other parts of the company. Um, that would be important for the interviewer to know that you have a deeper understanding of the company beyond just the job that you're applying for. So I think the company questions are important. Uh, the market questions are important. You know, what is the current trends in the current marketplace? The position that you would be going into, um, what would a day look like? Would I be doing, in the example of medical devices, would I be doing more implantation work in the operative room or would I be spending more time in the follow-up clinic supporting patients that have already been implanted? And so asking questions about what that would look like on a day-to-day -day basis would be, would be really important. So I think in the end, when you ask your series of questions that you've prepared, and really you should prepare probably three or four questions in each of those categories, people, team, you know, company, uh, market, and you know, I think the goal for you is to really have those prepared beforehand. 
So then you can work on your summation close to say at the end, you know, based on you know, our discussion, based on what you're looking for, this, this, and this, I feel like I'm the best fit for the role based on this, this, and this. And then what you want to do at the very end is ask that person for your support for the position. And I think you're going to get one of two responses. You're going to get, yes, you know, I would recommend you, or you might get a response that says we're still looking at other candidates. And what you would do at that point is just say, I can appreciate the fact that you're looking at other candidates. When you look at my background and the discussion we had, would you view me as a strong candidate? And then try to get you know, a confirmation that they view you as a strong candidate. So that's a real quick overview of some of the steps in an interview. Uh, I know it's a lot to digest. Hopefully you can break it down and work on each part. But one thing that we say at PrepMD is preparation equals placement. And I think preparing for the interview might be the most important thing you can do. Good luck and best of luck in your new career.